You know, a few years back, the Oakland Raiders had invited you to talk to them in training camp, and they told you you got about 10 minutes. That's a tough room. They're at camp. <laughs> they've had a long day. They don't know who you are at the time. And Norv Turner says to you, hey, go ahead. You've got your 10 minutes. Let it rip. How did you get their attention, and what was your message to a professional football team? Listen, uh, to me, it's, it's really about, you know, first of all, I just went right at them. I don't, I don't know any other way to go my whole life. If I've got something I've got to go handle, I've got to get closer to it. I've got to move right into it. And so that was the primary focus is just get connected to these guys. And the fact of the matter is, listen, I'm not going to teach them about football. I'm not going to teach them anything about how to run a pattern or how to, how to defense a play. What I am going to show about, I can talk about, is moving through the nonsense that gets in the way of being a team, putting the team first. Really, that's, again, I go back to SEAL Team. It's always about putting your guys first, working together, staying focused on the things that matter. And life is about being unreasonable rather than reasonable. Listen, it's very reasonable to complain and bitch and moan, but it's unreasonable to do that, especially when you're, when you're going after something that's really difficult, something that requires you to push yourself in a way you never thought possible. You have to be unreasonable in that moment. You can't find excuses. You can't find a reason not to accomplish what you want. You've got to find the thing that matters and stick to that thing. That's it. Your teammates are the key to being successful, and that's really what I tried to impart to those guys. You know, every time we talk about the military, certain branches of the military or members will call up the program and say, Army Rangers, baddest guys ever. Navy SEALs, toughest guys ever. Where do you come out? Who's the baddest, the best, the baddest, and the brightest? I'm going to come out with U.S. military. How's that? Very political. You know, listen, Very diplomatic. You know what? Exactly. You know, the fact of the matter is, I, I love my military, and it is my military, and I'm proud of every single sailor, every single soldier, every single Marine, every single airman that's out there doing a difficult, dangerous work for very little money and very little recognition. They deserve it. They are the heroes in my life. All right, this TV show is called Future Weapons. It's going to make its debut for season number two on the Discovery Channel Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern, and that's where it's going to be all season long. Hey, Mac, is there a website address that you might uh, direct the listeners to? Definitely. If, you've got, if you want to learn more, go to readyaimfuture.com. It's a great interactive website, a lot of things to see, a lot of little downloads you can go to. And if you have any great ideas about other weapons, let us know, and we'll get them on there. All right, Mac, we've come full circle. You made it into the program, a jungle appearance. Good job, Mac. Thank you, brother. An absolute honor and privilege to be here. And uh, I'm just, you know, I really hope that people know just how great a guy you are, how great a family man you are. And I just feel really privileged to be your friend, brother. Mac, me too. The very few people in this world that inspire me, and you're one of them. Good job, Mac. Richard Makowitz. And again, I met Mac back in the year 2000 when I read his book, I just went to a bookstore on one day, and I saw this book that said Unleash the Warrior Within. It was this guy on the cover. He looked pretty menacing. I read the back. I opened it up, flipped through it, read it, loved the book. And it's the first time I've ever actually read a book where I tried to actually find the author, where I sought out the author. And I got him on the phone, and he basically sounded like he just sounded right there. I was both scared to death and pretty compelled by the whole thing. Ready to go. So you can watch him on the Discovery Channel Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. And you want to read his book, too. Excellent book. Unleash the Warrior Within. All right, when we come back, I'm going to open it up to you. And on top of all of that, you know, that intensity, that I'm coming through the phone, I want a piece of you. He's got about 10 black belts. And he teaches a martial art that he trademarked himself. It's a bad man. Bad man with a good TV show. <laughs> Welcome back. Our thanks to Richard Makowitz. Right, let me read you a few emails coming off that interview. Dear Jim, what are these future weapons that Mac speaks of? Signed, Canada Slingshot. Francis and Glendale near Posh Spice. This email says, freaking Makowitz, damn. I'm sitting here at my PC kind of moaning that I didn't make my $2,500 per week goal, and I'm a little frustrated, and I'm listening to Mac, and I'm thinking, shoot, I need to apply his energy into my goals. Never even heard of this guy, and I'm energized. Great job, Vance Mac. Inspiration lives here. This is what I'm saying. You know, it's not like that star athlete that you grew up watching, 
and you all knew. I mean, there's a million guys running around L.A. with a dream and a goal or a plan or a script. I mean, the whole town is set up that way. I met this guy. Richard Mackwitz was a 10-year Navy SEAL and did exceptionally well in the military. I mean, he advanced to the level of instructor. Did very, very well. But got out of the service after spending 10 years with the SEALs. And that's an amazing accomplishment onto itself. Just to get through and then to be there 10 years. Got a book published. I mean, think about that. Just a Navy SEAL comes out, gets a book published. Great accomplishment. When I met him, he was teaching his martial arts and discipline. And he wanted to break into the business. And he had lots of different ideas. He wanted, he wanted to act. He wanted to produce. He was already writing. He was a prolific writer. And then he got himself a TV show. What I'm saying is the guy knew nobody and started with nothing, but willed himself to this point. Dear Jim, that was probably the most motivational speaker I've ever heard. Todd in Louisville. There's something I didn't get to. This one says, Dear Jim, Richard Makowitz is an inspiration. I'm going to go to Amazon and buy his book immediately. You know, something else he tells me when I first met him, he said, you know what you need to do? I said, what's that, Mac? He goes, you need to take a cold shower every day. I said, what the hell would I want to do that for? That's like the worst thing ever. What's worse than a cold shower? He goes, no, you're not listening to me. You need to do this every single morning before you go to work. I said, oh, I'm listening, all right. It's like the worst idea I've ever heard. Who wants a cold shower? I go, why the hell would I want to do that? And he locks me in. He goes, you know why? Because it's going to cut a toughness groove in your brain. Whoa, dude. <laughs> Very profound. A toughness groove in my brain. <laughs> I, I got it. And by the way, I'm never doing it. But I got it. And he still does. He still does. I mean, one thing to be out in the middle of nowhere in some faraway land doing what you have to do for the gig where there is no hot water. But now that the guy's made it, he gets up every morning at four and he still takes a cold shower. That's why he's a lot tougher than I am, I think. I'll tell you another time when I first met him. When I first met him, and he's still not so much now, I don't think, because of his schedule, but he trains people. And he has a discipline, but he won't teach you the discipline unless you qualify. He makes you take a test before he agrees to work with you. Which is something totally different. Another story. But when I first saw him, he said, choke me. I said, what? He said, choke me. I said, choke you. He said, choke me. I said, fine. So I started doing it. He goes, that's it? And then, then he starts kind of pushing me. And then there's a measure of your manhood. He got me to a point where I tried to choke the guy as hard as I could, and he didn't flinch. He was laughing at me. Not at all demoralizing. Nor humiliating. I got a million of those stories with Richard Makowitz. But the guy's real. And the guy brings it every single day. And he lives by a few very short mottos. Not dead, can't quit. And can you show up? Will you show up? It's a great book. It's a great TV show. And I admit, almost everybody I talk to on the program, I either have an association with or a professional relationship with or I know of that person. I've never actually interviewed somebody I'd never heard of that I could think of. But he's one of the few guys who I consider a very close friend. So that's Richard Makowitz.